Hey guys, so today I'm taking you behind the scenes of our awesome collaboration we just did with the most. From the first sketches all the way to the grand opening. Let's get started. And now, oh look. Yep, there Those we go. Tabs. Let's see if that updates inside of the assembly itself. Yes, there are tabs there. Now about Beckerman. Um, With supports on it, it'll look fine. Um, and then I think this would be this would print quite well in the powder bed technology, which we could use for the final build. Today I printed, I ran a print in our powder bed fusion printer, um, all of the parts for this project, just to get a feel for them, get them in my hands, uh, see what fits together, see what doesn't fit, what we might need to adjust or modify for the next print. So we'll be diving into that build as well. So you just printed the chassis on the H350. Yep. And I don't think we really have much H350 content. So why don't you just show us what you're doing? Yeah, so right now I'm taking the powder container, uh, the powder container off of our trolley here and putting on the pill box. I don't think I can do this with this mask on. <laughs> and then you mentioned something about cake. I'm kind of excited. So then the media blaster is the power shaft C over yep. there. Yep. Got it. Okay. Okay. So it rotates up and then slide down. Um, it's not necessarily number of times, it's, you know, the powder that we do reclaim, we refresh the machine at a 70-30 ratio, so 70% of that powder we put into the machine is, has already been used, uh, and then 30% is fresh, brand new powder. I'm no baker, but I think you forgot to add the egg to your <laughs> cake. Admittedly, like I can look at designs and review them, and maybe, and I'll catch things that won't print well or won't fit together. But a lot of my discovery happens once I actually print the parts. This is the power shot seat. It's an automatic bead blaster. Can you do this with delicate material as well? You can, it cleans all the powder off of the parts and smooths out the surface. Yep. Today we're printing the car body. In, and the tires and wheels in polyjet material. Uh, so full color print, I can assign the different colors. Um, ben put the graphics onto the car body itself. So those will import automatically. So pulling in the car body. And there it is, now it's checking the model. Model's checked. We'll run a quick repair on it. What does the repair do? The repair just closes any open faces or repairs any self intersections. Hmm. When you're dealing with 
STL files and, and meshes, they can get a little messy, especially once you start adding graphics. You missed your opportunity to say it gets a little meshy. <laughs> so we have the car body and that looks good there. Now, if I pull in the tires and the hubcaps, because we're going to print those in this polyjet technology as well. For what is polyjet? Color. So polyjet is a type of 3D printing technology. It uses liquid photopolymer resins. It's very similar to a 2D inkjet printer in that it jets all those individual colors out onto the build platform and cures them with UV light layer by layer. But there's individual lines for each one of those colors. So you can mix them together to achieve any color you're, any color you're looking for. In addition to that, there's also a flexible material. So we're going to take advantage of that material with our tires here. And you're just doing one wheel and one tire for this? Yeah, right now we just want to get these parts in our hands, make sure we're happy with the durometer of the tire, has the right amount of squish to it, make sure we're happy with the colors, and with the larger body like this, I'd like to do a shorter print. Awesome. Yeah. And then I can hit print. Yeah, so for the chassis, I brought up our F370CR, our FDM printer, and we're going to use this for a quick prototype of the chassis to make sure everything fits and we're happy with the design. There's that purge bar, we can pull that off, and this just peels off like this. Let's go take a look. Our print here, it still has support material on it, so we'll have to dissolve it. But I like to take a look before just throwing it into the tank. But just taking a look, it does look like the shock absorbers are a bit small for our design. So we will need to, to make those a little bigger. You did a lot of work this weekend, and I'd like to know what you did and what you learned, what went wrong, what sure. went right. Yeah. So first we printed the main chassis using FDM technology, just the ABS material. I noticed the details on the shocks were a bit small for FDM. Uh, since we're using powder bed fusion later, that's okay, but we are going to go back and make those a little bit bigger, so the FDM print looks nice. We printed the main car body using the SAF technology, the powder bed, and that allowed us to just see how it fit and get a general idea of our wall thickness, make sure everything was good before we printed the full color model. Uh, in the meantime, I also printed out the tires. I did the test print on the rubber-like material to make sure it was the um, had the flexibility I was looking for, test print on the wheels, and then came the main chassis. So we used powder bed fusion, which captured the details very nicely on the chassis. I also made the wheels uh, using polyjet and put those together. So we got the colors we wanted there. It fit onto the chassis nicely. The pins holding it in are a bit small relative to the size and weight of the tires. So we are gonna look to beefing those up a bit there. We also have these ancillary components for show that fit in. And then I also printed the full color car model in Polyjet. So this came out nice. We did knock off one of the mirrors during assembly. So might look to strengthen that up or just be more careful next time. Sorry. So uh, what were some of the biggest challenges that you're gonna have to focus on with the new design? Yeah, so the main things, one, the size of the details here of the shocks, just making them larger so they, they print better. Um, also, the assembly of the wheels, realizing that with the Polyjet technology, we can print all of these parts in one. So the flexible tire and the rigid wheel, next time I can print those as one piece. So that will save a lot of time and headache on gluing it and assembling it. So we have our final prints here, our final renditions. 
we reprinted the chassis with the slightly larger shocks there. So we're leaving the support material on to showcase the process. So that turned out good. We also printed the tires and then paused the print so you could see the infill inside. And those came out good. And then the chassis and the SAF technology with the larger shocks came out nice. So one thing that was challenging was getting this car clean. And you'll notice one of the side mirrors ended up breaking off. We used the water jet to jet off all of the support material. And that took about an hour to get it all off. So that was one of the challenges was getting the parts clean without breaking them. So one thing that went really well was how the tires printed. We set the wheel to a glossy finish and then the rubber like material on the outside and printed it all as one piece, which turned out really well. So we're in the process of setting up the display uh, before bringing it over to the most. We have our napkin sketches, our first prototypes using FDM, our sort of unfinished print with the chassis and electronics, and then our finished model. Thank you all for uh, coming out and uh, thanks for coming.